Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this section on LP applications, we will focus our example discussion on operations management application. So what this means is uh, in the sense of optimizing the arrangement of things, scheduling, product mix, producing goods, factory operations, uh, including staffing and inventory control, capacity planning, and in many other ways, uh, everything, everything, all the control parameters involved in operations. So one thing that we will pick up in this particular example is um, how we can uh, take care of certain situations that are kind of looking very different in real life. All right. And yet when it comes to modeling, we can apply the same tricks. So reusing the same uh, translation tricks in LP modeling and also one important uh, modeling trick that we will pick up here in this example and that is on uh, taking care of ratio metric kind of constraints okay so let's try to uh, understand what this example is all about here we are going to produce uh, wings so the wings are basically aeroplane wings so they are huge they take time to produce and um, the company has to produce 20 wings in the first month April 24 and 30 in the next two months if that is all all right if that is it then uh, basically it's quite easy right just make to order if you have 20 to deliver this month and you don't have uh, uh, extra location to store the to inventorize the wings just make to order so this month produce 20 the next month produce 24 and the third month produce 30 make to order finish there's no no way to optimize but let's see what what happens it has workers right so you have 100 fully qualified workers and um, we might wonder at this point, what does fully qualified mean? So let's read on. So a fully qualified worker can either be in production or in training. Ah, okay. So we're in this situation where we can grow, we can train new recruits, their, their incoming uh, workforce. A new recruit can be trained to be an apprentice in a month. One month, right? So now notice how this looks so different from the financial application example we discussed earlier on. Yet, yet, if you think about it, if we rephrase it, it's saying that this recruit sounding like an investment option, right? This investment option takes one month to mature. This recruit takes one month to mature into the status called apprentice and if you think about it this way then as far as translation into lp model and constraints are concerned they're the same right because maturity in financial applications is basically a uh, changing or, or promotion change of status in the operations situation or human resource situation right so for that matter uh, they're the same when it comes to translation so let's keep that in mind. Uh, although it sounds like very new, our first discussion of uh, promotion or, or, or a change of status after a training period, this is just like an investment maturing in a given duration, right? It's the same. And we know how to model time in LP model now, so we can reuse our tricks there. Nothing extremely new here, although the wordings are very different the the uh, application domain is sounding very different but from the lp modeling and translation perspective same trick right after another month that means uh for, for starting from as a apprentice it takes another month for the apprentice to become a worker at which point this qualified worker can either be deployed as production or as trainer each trainer can train at most two recruits 
just to take care of the case that there are, there are odd number of recruits, right? So each trainer can train up to two recruits because they're apprentice, they, they, uh, they, the attention has to be there. So let's say the company policy says each trainer can, cannot take care of more than two recruits. Sounds reasonable and it is this part, it is this part that we will encounter some difficulty. So uh, I will focus on this line in a while, but let's, let's quickly scan through the rest. Uh, we are given production rate, salary, and uh, we can imagine these will be the coefficients that we need to plug into. Uh, just take one look and it has to be constraints because uh, it, it's probably uh, constraint coefficients, right? Uh, of course, it can also be uh, numbers that we plug into objective function, but let's see what do we have to optimize. Don't assume, let's see what we need to do. In this case, for the month, of June, NWC wishes to have no recruits. At the end of June, NWC must have at least 140 full-time workers. Now, notice how this, this sentence sounds like the finance show application case where we say at the end of the four-month planning horizon, we must have at least $10 million. Here it is at the end of uh, the three month planning horizon, we must have at least 140 workers. Okay, fine. One is money, one is worker, but let's say amount of dollars and no uh, number quantity of workers, at least 10 million, at least 140. Same translation, right? So we can do the same thing. And it involves month. And when it involves months, we need to be careful of the quantity that we snapshot within the month. Is it at the end, the middle, the end, right? So again, we want to be extremely clear with our definition of the decision variables. Uh, at what point in time of the month are we counting? Yeah, because the numbers can change. So again, we default to using start of the month or start of the, of the interval. So if it's week of planning, then we say at the start of the week or at the start of the year, so here we say at the start of the month. Now, um, we are given the production rates for each kind of workers. Production produce production workers produce a, a, a lot, uh, 0.6 of a wing per month, very, very rapidly. Trainer, half the rate, but trainer gets to train people. So we allow for half time. Trainer gets paid a lot more uh, uh, and production, 3000 right so apprentice turns out to be um, contributing more to the progress of wings production than trainer so they are paid uh, equally decently and we need to get up to speed of uh, for recruits because they contribute 0 0.05 uh, maybe they help to carry tools, maybe they buy lunch for the workers and therefore improve productivity of the workers somewhat. So they contribute in that sense uh, and they are paid a salary. Okay, Now, um, perhaps in this summary slide, it wasn't stated as in what is the concern of the problem owner. Uh, but of course, uh, we should be able to guess, although it's not ideal, we shouldn't be guessing, but we can uh, deduce that saving cost should be the prime objective of uh, this company, uh, this company's operations. It, it is possible that we also want, we may also uh, try to maximize, you know, progress of the wings or um, maximize the number of trainers for a certain month or maximize certain number of production workers for a certain month. Although those the, the real goal or reasons to have those objective functions might not be so clear. So for operations, typically it is to minimize overall costs. Okay. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, clearly, we need to have four decision variables already. Number of, number of production workers, number of trainers, number of apprentices, number of recruits. The question is also, how many recruits do we hire, do we take in at the start of 
every month remember right so we not only have to have four variables because then we say well we have three months to think about right every month we ask how many worker of each of the four types do we need okay now of course the second month uh, for example production workers is not totally delinked from the, the first month the previous month's production workers the second month's apprentice is not completely detached from the previous month's um, recruit yeah? because it takes one month to mature to get promoted to apprentice so we need to link them together but instead of using the subtractive way of saying things given that the second month has five uh, apprentice and uh, you know 10 trainers and 10 production workers and a total of 30 workers then we minus 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 to get the number of recruits we don't deduce the number uh, per se right we don't subtract to get the results instead we dedicate fresh decision variables to describe right each kind of unknowns that we have and then when we need to describe the aggregate for example we ask total number of workers must be at least 140 uh, then we add up the aggregate variable the, the individual component variables to come up with the aggregate total so very quickly we are going to basically flash out four times three months that is 12 decision variables right so let's take a look at the uh, offered solution here so indeed we have four types of counts of different four kinds of workers for each of the months that's the basic idea basic thinking but we know that for example at the start of the third month we will not be hiring right so in june we will not be hiring so one way is to say we have r3 for june and then constrain it set r3 to be equal to zero right but that that's sounding a little bit strange because we already know the the outcome we cannot optimize it company policy says r3 equals to zero so we can say r3 define r3 and constrain it to be zero but since we already know the outcome we can just delete the variable so there's no three right r3 for june if there is um, no r3 for june then we also don't need trainers for june so for that reason we we sort of uh, optimize the the model a little bit by saying that okay we already know by the logic of the company's uh, uh, policies we need trainers to train recruits to become apprentices. if there are no recruits we don't have to allocate trainers right or we pretend we don't know how many trainers we need and then let model figure out that it should be zero we don't need that so we cancel out t3 now for first month there should be no apprentice all right because we currently don't have any recruits so when we hire recruits they cannot be directly promoted to apprentice so even if they're very experienced very seasoned they come in as recruits now you wouldn't enjoy that if you are a seasoned uh, college graduate who can be given exam credits to jump into university second year right uh, so that's exemption but they don't have exemptions they all come in as recruits and they take one month to get promoted so for the first month we should count zero apprentice and therefore for the same uh, reasoning we don't need to have a1 and set it to equal to zero okay and production workers we need that and we don't know the exact numbers so we need three holders three containers uh, for production workers so far so good okay and of course uh, let's let's uh, check the definition of our decision variables it's got the unit not thousands of producers but unit producers so number of producers right and it's got duration it's for one month it's not for one week one day 